Hello everyone, myself Heming Sathwara and I am from LG Institute of Engineering and Technology. Today we are going to discuss about well-known technology nowadays we are using in our daily life which is known as IoT. So in this session we are going to discuss about what is IoT and how it can help in our daily life. So here these are the outline of today's lecture. First we are going to discuss about its introduction history of IoT, how IoT works, how IoT can help its applications and advantages and disadvantages. So let us start with introduction first. So what is the full form of IoT? Here we can see it is known as Internet of Things. Basically we can define IoT like this. You can find various types of definition of IoT but what is actually IoT how can you define exactly so now right now you are watching this video in your smartphone or maybe in your in your desktop or laptop so that whatever device you are using right now for watching this video that is connected to the internet and through this internet you can access this video or maybe data so we will get immense of benefits through this internet of things so basically I mean to say IOT that means you can connect data from the outer world you can access data from the outward outer world with the help of internet so that is internet of things here we can see introduction of IOT Internet of Things describes physical objects or groups of such objects that are embedded with sensors processing ability software and other technologies and that connect and exchange data with other devices and systems over the internet or other communication networks so here I am telling you about sensors which type of sensors you are going to use in IOT it may be gas sensor, it may be PIR sensor, it may be IR sensor, proximity sensors, flame sensors. So there are various types of sensors are available. With the help of these sensors, you can connect data, you can connect network to this technology. So here we can see exchange data with other devices and system over the internet or other communication networks. So basically, Internet of Things are divided into three categories here you can see number one it is known as sensors that collect information and then send it so basically here we are talking about sensors like I already told you about it PIR sensor then gas sensors with the help of this gas sensor you can detect various types of gases and work on it so sensor that collect information and then send it number two here you can see computers that receive information and then act on it and number three things that do both sensors that collect information then send it that means various types of sensor you can use in IOT for example I am using here gas sensor with the help of gas sensor it detects various types of gases and it collect that particular information of gases and send it to the devices various devices so that is sensors that collect information and then send it so basically here we are going to use this type of category sensors that collect information and then send it computers that receive information and then act on it that means computer which gets information from that particular network layer and you can take action against it so that is computer that receive information and then act on it number three things that do both number one and number two so here let us start with history of IOT internet of things 
history of iot was coined independently by kevin aston of png which is well known company procter and gamble later mit's auto id center in 1999 at that point he viewed radio frequency identification as essential to the internet of things which would allow computers to manage all individual things here radio frequency identification nowadays we are using this at the toll gate rfid so it is basically example of iot how so with the help of rfid you can access the toll gate and you can pass from that particular passage so basically it is connected to the one type of server which detect through this sensor your code and it gives to the information and then the gate toll gate opens and you can move forward so basically here is the iot example radio frequency identification which is known as rfid defining the internet of things as simply the point in time when more things or objects were connected to the internet than people cisco systems estimated that iot was born between 2008 and 2009 so this is history of internet of things iot here you can see how iot works so basically it is also known as iot architecture here you can see how iot works or you can say it is one type of iot architecture so what is architecture of iot there are three layers technically right so first layer is perception layer here you can see it is starting from collecting data this is number 1 collecting data so we are using basically iot devices first here you can see it may be sensors it may be antenna it may be microcontroller right so which can connect particular information particular data and transfer it to the second layer so basically here so basically here we can see sensors so i told you already various types of sensors we are using here proximity sensor pir sensor ir sensor flame sensor with the help of these sensors we can collect particular information and forward to the different layers second here you can see number 2 collect and transfer data so basically this is known as the network layer network layer that means it collect the information from the perception layer and transfer it to the forward so basically here it is denoted as iot hub it may be your router it may be your iot gateway it collect the particular information and forward it to the third layer here you can see number 3 it is known as application layer in application layer the data should be analyzed and take action against particular information according to information so it may be user interface for example smartphone human machines smart variables you can say analytics of business appli application and back end system so here basically iot divided in three type of layer but you can add more layers into it here you can see if your sensors are collecting data and then send it to the second layer which is known as network layer so between there there is a transmission so due to this it is one more layer added to this it is known as transport layer so you can say there are four various types of layer first perception layer second transport layer third it is network layer and fourth one it is application layer so in which we have to analyze that particular data and 
take action against it so i'm going to give you one example of it for example you are using moisture sensor so what is the work of moisture sensor if you have a garden or farm so you are using moisture sensor at that time so due to this it can collect data of that particular atmosphere and send it to the routers that particular routers or we can say it, it may be clouds storage clouds which can store multiple information in it that send it to the your smartphone for example you are using smartphone in which you have application related to th that particular work so it shows you that your garden area has that type of moisture layer so it needs some sprinkles of water so at that time you can control the watering in your garden so due to this you can use various types of sensors according to your requirement so this is how iot works or you can say iot architecture now next one is how iot can help here you can see iot platforms can help organizations reduce cost through improved process efficiency asset utilization and productivity the growth and convergence of data processes and things on the internet would make such connections more relevant and important creating more opportunities for people business and industries so basically i'm trying to say that i with the help of iot you can increase your process efficiency asset utilization and productivity because it is more accurate that's why the growth and convergence of data processes and things on the internet would make such connections more relevant and important so it create more open opportunities for people business and industries here you can see next one is applications of iot so we are using right now iot internet of things in various areas so it is included in wearable technology for example smart watches nowadays you can see people are using smart watches so with the help of smart watches they can monitor their health rates or you can say heart rates along with spo2 smartphones nowadays we are using various types of smartphones which collect most of information from the internet and give it to you automotive connected healthcare analytics home application home lighting online shopping home applications for example you are using smart lock you are using cctv camera so if you have a cctv camera at your home you can access it into your mobile phone so you can use iot in home application home lighting for example you have to fix lighting or you have to dim that particular light so with the help of this application you can dim that particular light and increase the light intensity so iot is also used or we can say iot is also enters in your home as an application now here we can see these are the advantages of iot it can assist in the smarter control of homes and cities via mobile phones it enhances security and, and offers personal protection by automating activities it saves us a lot of time information is easily accessible even if we are far away from our actual location and it is updated frequently in real time for example you have you need to understand about your ac working condition so if you are out of your home your ac is still on then you can off that particular ac from your mobile phone electric devices are directly connected and communicate with the controller computer such as cell phone resulting in efficiency electricity use as a result there will be no unnecessary use of electricity equipment it minimizes human effort 
because iot devices connect and communicate with one another and perform a variety of op operations without the need of human intervention patient care can be performed more effectively in real time without the need for a doctor's visit because here we can see practo app for example it is the doctor doctor's app you can connect with the doctors and you can tell all your symptoms to that doctor on online video calling so that is basically example of iot it gives them the ability to make choices as well as provide evidence based care asset tra tracking traffic or transportation tracking inventory control delivery sur surveillance individual order tracking and customer management can all be made more cost effective with the help of tracking system you can track your delivery from the mobile phone so that is basically an example of iot now one particular system has advantage along with its disadvantages so here comes to the disadvantages hackers may gain access to the system and steal personal information since we add so many devices to the internet there is a risk that our information as it can be misused they rely heavily on the internet and are unable to function effectively without it we lost control of our lives our lives will be fully controlled and reliant on technology because we nowadays connect with the internet more and more and overuse of the internet and technology makes people unintelligent because they rely on smart devices instead of doing physical work causing them to become lazy nowadays we can see smart home application people are not switching off their fan switch or light switch because they are accessing it on mobile phone so due to this they become very lazy unskilled workers are at high risk of losing their jobs which could lead to unemployment smart surveillance cameras robots smart ironing system smart washing machines and other facilities are replacing security guards maids iron man and dry cleaning services etc it is very difficult to plan build manage and enable a broad technology to iot framework so here in today's session we are discussing about its introduction so basically you need to clear your basics on iot then and then you can apply it on the practices so today's session we are discussing about history advantage and disadvantage and its applications that's it for today's lecture thank you